What's going on, everybody? This is the French Workbench Podcast here on a Saturday. Thank you all for tuning in and, well, anybody that's tuning in at this time. <laughs> My name is Dan French. I'm your host. We're streaming live from Las Vegas, and we're here every Saturday, also on Tuesdays, so you guys can catch us on previous shows. Um, if you like the content to this show and to past shows, please subscribe to the channel. Also, hit that like button throughout the process of this show. One of the problems that people are seeing right now is that there's not a lot of places to rent. And so what people are doing is uh, they're really going, you know, to any extent to try to get into a house or into a place to rent right now, especially here in Las Vegas. We're having the same challenges here in rent in the rental sector, also in the housing sector. So we're going to go through that today with uh, Mr. Rick Rains. Uh, we're also going to talk a lot about what's happening in the commercial and business sector as far as in las vegas so guys we have a great show for you today a lot of people out there they want to know the the information with the moratorium the eviction moratorium also what's happening in this in this industry well not the industry but what's, what's happening in the rental sector here in las vegas there's a lot of people coming from out of state that really can't find a place to stay uh, especially if they're trying to buy a home and they need time to let the home be built if they're buying a new home or just in general just making that transition so are you seeing a lot of the same things with that? Uh, yes, uh, we've got quite a few. Um, just recently, a couple of owners coming in from out of state. It's difficult for them. Um, some are coming prior to actually closing uh, uh, their other house, the one that they're selling out of state. Yeah. And so normally they're looking for a place to rent and they're in with everybody else. Uh, it's, it's really a... Uh, feeding frenzy out there right now yeah it's not unusual for us to put a property uh online or uh, up for rent on a friday and basically have a, a line at the door come monday of uh, people with applications so let's talk a lot of people to, in in this industry that we're in real estate um there's many sectors are different layers to real estate there's property management you can go get a property management license on top of a real estate license and that's typically how it works um, you have to do additional training or additional uh, education to get that property management license to, you know, obviously run many properties. So let's talk to Mr. Rick. Rick, what's going on, buddy? So you you have a lot of properties that you oversee. Is that right? That's correct. We, we, we currently manage mm -hmm. probably uh, a little over 500, between 500 and 600. Okay. And so well, those... You um you, like apartment units or the, what do you mean 500? Are they single um, resident there, homes or? There's majority of them are single family residences, whether they be single family homes, condos, townhomes. Okay. And who's, who, so you're managing them for half of the private owner. Is that for, how Correct. Right, for so the private yeah. owner or for the company that they own. Gotcha. Collecting rent, taking care of HOA stuff, that type of stuff. Yeah. The, the whole enchilada. Gotcha. So with this eviction moratorium coming out, I think a lot of people want to know, first off, is there properties out there to rent? And we'll kind of go and go into another segment of what's going to happen with the moratorium. So let's first talk about what, how many properties are out there? I know you have quite a few properties. Is there a lot of properties that people can choose from that you work with or just in general that you're seeing? I would say in general from uh, one, from just general knowledge and two, from looking at my company, no, there aren't a lot of properties out there that are available. As soon as they come on the market, if they're priced right, they're normally gone within 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, that's crazy, right? 24 to 48. So you got people sitting at the front of your of your office ready to ready to pounce on the fact that they want to get into a house because something became available. Is that right? Well, actually, what they're doing is they're sitting at home and they're constantly on the Internet and or they're working with other real estate agents trying to find them properties and the what i see happening is that they hesitate and if they don't pull the trigger like and i'm not within half an hour of them finding out um they're going to lose even an opportunity to get the place because everything is just moving that quickly yeah it's it's weird i mean so i see a lot of people that are looking to rent they want short-term rentals or rentals that are three months um are you having people where they're, when they're in the, the the position of not paying their rent or in a position where you said there's an eviction going on. Um, what is the process with that? Are you guys starting to see that because of the eviction moratorium happening right now? Well, the eviction moratorium is um, in a constant flux. Okay. And right now the, um, the moratorium that the CDC tried to pass 
was uh, struck down by the Supreme Court. But at the same time, the federal government said, no, we're going to continue through the end of October with the, with the moratorium. But it's basically, and again, I'm not an attorney, but it's basically with the um, federally backed loans. Uh, if you have a federally backed loan, you can't evict. You can't evict, huh? Can't, right. If you don't have a federally backed loan, then you can. Well, but then there are other guidelines that prevent you from, um, from evicting as well. And the uh, Supreme Court actually just the other day um, had a decision striking down part of uh, New York's eviction law. I think you're going to see this happen across the country because what yeah, that was just that was just yesterday, wasn't it? Do you, yeah, you it was talking about Thursday? It? I think Thursday it came down, and and this is the big point with the whole COVID theme with all these laws to begin with, because um, what they said, because you're probably familiar with this, um, somebody claims COVID affected me, therefore I can't pay rent, therefore you can't evict, right? Correct. So the Supreme Court said, uh, yeah, you can't do that because basically what you're doing in that situation is you're allowing the tenant to be his own judge of his own case how can you ever defend when somebody simply claims you know i'm affected by this and that's the standard with the legal so i think um as this thing progresses you're going to see this challenge and this whole thing's going to fall apart completely i agree so what happens is right now the the uh, cdc um, declaration has uh, six different points that tenants can uh, select one of them and turn that into either their property manager, their owner. They can turn it into the courts during the course of an eviction. And as soon as that comes up, um, all bets are off. I it's see. that simple. And so what's happened is the owners of these properties, at least our owners, so I'm not, I'm only speaking about our owners. We have great, amazing owners. Right. They've done the best that they can with these tenants. In a lot of cases, they have been working with them on payment plans and things of that nature. And what happens, or what apparently happens, is that a lot of tenants decide to then uh, sit on their laurels or not follow through. I'm not exactly sure what their thinking is, but the government and the courts have now figured out that tenants aren't going to step forward on their own. So as an example, prior, uh, a tenant could, would have to initiate the CDC. They would have to initiate going after the money on themselves by themselves. You mean the landlord? No, the tenant. That's the only way it worked. The tenant had to initiate these things. Right. Oh, now, to get a stay. To, yeah. to, to get money or to, to do the CDC declaration. It was initiated by the tenant. Okay. Now it's changed. So as an example, if you file for uh, an eviction, a complaint, legitimate, uh, on there, the landlord has an option now to click mediate. Mm. And if they click mediate, what happens is you go in front of a mediator, which is again part of the justice system, the judicial system, and the mediator then forces the issue of going after CHAPS or other um, funding for the tenant because these tenants aren't doing it on their own. So the only way that they can uh, force the situation of using all of this funding is to allow landlords to try and initiate it. And a lot of the, the landlords that have been sitting on twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 worth of non-payment of rent, they're pushing that button in order to try and get the CDC, or excuse me, the the CHAPS program to step in for them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what will happen is tenant walks, landlord never sees a penny. So really, the landlord has a lot to risk on this then, I guess, right? I mean, they're risking everything. The landlord's the one who's losing out on everything. Yeah. Question, Rick. So That's terrible. We're, we're, have these landlords, um, so once you're, it's been over a year for all of these tenants by now. Mm -hmm. So if your contract is up, your contract is up. You should be able to vacate the tenant at that point, right? Because they're and just cut your losses. Because so I, I thought people were moving what's more changing, shorter term. What's changing? What's changing? What's changing in that aspect? Before the answer was no, you couldn't. So that was when the moratorium was across the board. This was when it first started out. Um, your hands were just basically tied. What was good about it is that the majority of tenants um, stepped up, did the right thing, did what they could. There's, there's. You know, life is a bell-shaped curve. Yeah. And you're always going to have people on one end that are going to take advantage of the system and whatever is presented to them. 
and that's in any facet anywhere so basically it's those people that we're kind of sort of talking about now and a lot of them are still really good people they just need to be shown how to do it and then there are other people um, that we've witnessed in our office that just say eh, i'm out of here and they'll walk away with a twenty thousand dollar balance gotcha and there's nothing that can be reported on that and what i initially... oh they can't go to the credit no you can't do anything no it's been that was that was one of the see, things is see, that... that's one of the so things. that wasn't nevada originally Oh no, that's that's across that's the a, board. That's a yeah. yeah. That's across the board. You can't yeah. you, you can't uh, talk about it, you can't um, bring it up, you can't ask about it, why it was, if it was for non payment, did was this a whole how much did you owe type of thing. No, you can't talk about it. So what I originally when this first came out a year and a half ago or so, I told all my agents what's eventually going to happen is that you're gonna have people that played the system, so to speak. Right. Um, that are just popping. And so what's going to happen is those that move from us are going to go to somebody else, and those that are at somebody else are going to end up right. coming to us. So let, you, let me ask you a question about that, because you've been in the business for what, 20 years, something about? Well, since 78. 43 years. 43 years, me excuse me. You. I'm sorry. You yeah. formed this current company in the 90s, what you said. Yeah, 95. All right. So, and we've had the, I think they started that in March 2020, right? So it's been about, about a year and a half. Right. So are you seeing people, uh, the owners, if they're getting finally getting a tenant out, are they looking to re-rent or are they just looking to sell? Both. Or both. Uh, most of the time, right now at this moment, you're seeing them move a lot more to um, throwing their hands up and saying, I need to sell and get out. And the, part of the reason for that is is because of the price increases in housing. So a place that was worth 400000 last year is worth... 500 or more and yeah. I mean, they're seeing these huge increases in prices so they they see it as a great time to cut their losses and, and get out of dodge right and, and you can't blame them thank you for watching an episode of the french workbench podcast if you want to tune into past episodes please subscribe to my channel now also if you want to look at our audio only options we do have itunes and soundcloud